series looks so good, but, uh, you know, coming into this, we do have to talk about pick bans. Hacker has actually never played uh, Nidalee in his entire LPL career. That's why we're going to see it banned. That is a draft advantage I have to give to Invictus Gaming. I think Nidalee is a tier one jungler right now, so that's going to affect a lot of these drafts going into it. While on the other hand, E-Stars is taking away a lot of those hyper carry champions that we I have been looking at in the bot side. And also taking away the Pantheon, right? We talked about Hacker. This is one of his strongest champions that can actually facilitate the early ganks in these lanes. Already, Eastar know what they're going to do, though. And this was in the draft, Clement. That's why I'm so proud of you. So proud to be working with you. Because this is the nail on the head for what Eastar want to do. Yep, they do love their stun top lanes. And they do like to do a lot of dives. This is a team that really focuses on Herald instead of the Dragon and they like to get their top lane going. So it's IG's turn to kind of answer back onto that. And I do want to see them actually go for something more defensive in the top side. If they can weather the storm, um, then I, I think they have a much better chance to win out on the bot lane and just snowball the game that way. Okay, well, seeing the Twisted Fade, bit of a response here is we go through this pick and bam pretty fast, ladies and gents. And note that a lot of the time, uh, we have seen an 80 carry in the first phase. For both of these teams, they're going without. So the Shies now will re-debut, and Issa now have to make a decision. This is super interesting, and this is not what we normally see in draft. Both of these teams are signaling that they're going to be more topside focused. We do see the double globals matching the pick potential coming out from E-Stars, and it's their chance to probably take up a jungler right here. Um, Graves is uh, one of Hacker's most played champions, but it really doesn't fit that ganking category that we've talked about with them going into the top side. So this Galio pick is likely going to be the, uh, the 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 kind of crucial key maker to making those plays in the top side for them. Something that Irma's been comfortable on. If you didn't watch 2020 LPL, Irma's Galio was exceptional. Uh, at the very least, it, it gave him that entrance debut. He was a, a rookie player otherwise. So for Irma, going back to a bit of comfort here, while again, I mentioned we have no AD carries. So it's going to be a lot of bands coming across from IG Start targeted towards that bottom lane. And I don't think Wink really minds. He's been taking the Lucian kind of off meta. So he can kind of play with anything at this point. I do like the Syndra ban, however. We have seen a lot of Galio supports. And if I had to pick Irma's best champion, I would definitely say the Syndra for now. He's really good on Scatter of the Weak. Always tip-top accuracy on that one. And I do like E-Stars banning away the Leona rather than over-indexing into the AD carry bans. Uh, Leona is still the best support in the LPL by a long shot. We pick it more than any other support and it works really well with the pick composition that we see from IG. I'm mean, gonna be curious to see if Fallon just uh, decides, well, I might just go for the Alistar if it's left up and available because the set also another support ban. Remember, Shousey's support pool is huge. You can't give him playmaking supports and the Alistar would be a nice takeaway before IG could take it themselves. Yeah, Shaozi has been an absolute sensation this split, and his champion pool has also been fairly unique. He's actually been going for Thresh and Rakan, yep. uh, two champions that aren't really considered meta by uh, the rest of his peers. So pretty interesting here. They do a fake out, and they do get an extra ban in the mid lane out from IG, but it does seem like it will be the Galio in the mid lane and the Alistar for the support position. Okay, so we're short up, and the flex no longer there. That means we know we're expecting an AD carry from Rat. And Wink goes on the offensive. No Lucian this time, Clement, unfortunately, but we get the Misfortune, we get the lane priority, and Bowland shows his, his, his Nautilus. Now, Clement, we also mentioned that Nautilus is winless in the LPL after three games, so Bowland trying to change that stat. Yeah, I haven't been liking the Nautilus pick, but we do have to remember that at this stage in the draft, really aren't a lot of options left on the table. I can understand it. It's just something to get an engage going. And... Rounding out IG's draft, they have a very clear identity. Double globals from the Pantheon and the Twisted Fate. They want to be making picks all across the map. They also have that top lane in the NAR, where if they throw enough resources, this can be a split pushing point. As we've mentioned, split push is very important in the pick compositions. You don't want to run into people when they're a five-man group. On the other side for E-Stars, this is something that I like a bit more. It's more tried and true. They have a strong front line in Galio and Alistar. They have double AD carries, and they also have a split pushing point in the Camille. So looking overall at these drafts, I think top side is gonna be a huge deciding factor. That side lane split push, whoever gets that is also gonna get the pick potential from the rest of the roster as well. So I think top lane is where we have to focus for the early game. 
I also love that, you know, you mentioned the global and IG side first, but let's not forget, Eastar can match with the Galio. A lot of the time in 2020, when we saw these Twisted Fate versus Galio matchups, it was whoever was there first, and if the opponent mid laner was able to match. I think that's going to be something we'll talk about with Irma on this Galio. Running up against Rookie, it's, it's not what you expect of Rookie. You know, Rookie's always that Orianna, the Syndra himself. He dominates lame lane and then tries to win game based off of that. But he's going to try and influence one of these lanes and early proactivity to the top side, Clement. Couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah, and I, I like this look from uh, Rookie because he's been putting out a lot of fires on IG side lanes all this time. And what better champion to put out fires than Twisted Fate? You can actually get there sooner than anyone else. Another interesting thing about this champion is that we've actually been seeing a lot of Moonstone Renewer being tried out on Twisted Fate as well, just to oh. get him a little bit more skirmish oriented and help out his teammates when he finally does land. An interesting little tidbit as we go into game one, folks, Eastar and IG, actually a little bit closer than you expected. Eastar, a better team than we thought, and IG struggling after that win against JDG. And now as we enter the Summoner's Rift in the middle of week three, I hope you're ready. I can hear the Jios. Coming into Shanghai. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Yassi has gone back. All right, never mind. We, we were thinking about it from Eastar's perspective, but uh, Clement, I want you to walk me through a little bit of these drafts. Since we don't see that uh, level one and that full on engage, uh, you were mentioning the global potential from IG. So I'm expecting that we should be talking about the level six mark when IG get active. Yeah, I think whoever makes the first roam top lane is going to dictate the first 50 minutes of the game. That first double global into the top side, it's it's really going to swing one way or the other, and you're going to see a split push kind of develop. Camille is traditionally more favored against the Nar, even heading into the late game, but that is a matchup that can be influenced with uh, outside pressures. So, uh, like I said, I, I still think the level 6 is the most important, and if I'm just looking at the picks, I will give a slight advantage over to E-Stars, because the Galio is the one that can shove the lane a little bit easier against Twisted Fate. True. For now, though, just getting poked out before he hits that level 3. Uh, so right now, against the turret, as you can see. Junglers, however, Clement, crucially, started on opposite sides of the map. So when we were talking about the setup for top side, the potential to put ZS behind a little bit, abuse the Shy's range for now, comes through when he moves his way up. And there's been a lot of discussion on this NAR pick. Uh, a lot of decisive views right here, but just taking a look at the level one, nothing's going to happen out of it. I'm going to continue on with my spiel. Uh, NAR for me is a split, put, split push focus pick right now. I don't really think it serves as well as a team fight frontline. We haven't really seen a NAR go into Mega and get a three man push or anything of that sort. The Drake fights are just happening too fast right now for you to probably set up on a frontline NAR. And the way I look at this pick is, unless you have a counter pick, unless you're able to split push with it, it's actually not that strong of a pick. So, you know, I, I know the Shy loves it, but if he doesn't get help from his teammates, if he isn't able to play defensively enough when he needs to, then this is a champion that does kind of fall off quite hard. I would also say that, you know, since we have supports in the meta like Alistar, Leona, there's a lot of disengage, there's a lot of holding in these team fights that make it so much harder for the Nar to do anything. So, you know, there's a, there's a wider discussion around this, but at least for Lane to further your point, we can see that the Shy is already bullying out the matchup, already getting the shove here. Rookie doing the same in the mid lane and Wink as well. Remember what we talked about. IG want to win all lanes all the time. And then Picks have started the game off in exact fashion. Yeah, and we're seeing a sizable lead starting to happen into the bottom side of the map right here. Um, this is kind of to be expected. Misfortune, very, very strong early laning phase. However, the real question is, do they have their lane in a proper state at this point? If they over push, we are seeing a sort of a split match situation where they could very well be punished by Hacker. Depends if Irma can get the Justice Punch into Shield of Brand. Knock up onto Rookie, and here we go. Two versus one, because Shun's on the other side. Moving towards his jungle, but it's double flash already. You've lost. IG down for first blood. And Easter, just like that, smack him in the back. Yeah, both sides were baiting right there, so Rookie kind of overplayed his hand. Gets right, uh, gets hit directly by the Justice Punch, so very easy follow-up with the red buff on the hacker 
uh, on the graves it was just a very simple chase down kill and that is going to have a large impact because as we were yeah. talking about a lot of it is about globals going top side and now irma is going to have an exp lead into that mid lane he's going to be the one to move first he's also able to reset the wave he's walking back now with his teleport to clement so he doesn't necessarily have to commit the hero's entrance can just teleport in the back of the play so multiple options there as rookie pushes out now starts threatening himself Irma will come back with that experience like you talked about but the flash from Balan over Chelsea onto Rat who doesn't have ulti but gets the blade mm. caller roots down three now shouldn't low Balan low as well I can hear the police outside and they're coming for Rat IG was so damn close to losing that play but eventually Wink gets the kill Five-man rotation. Unfortunately for Rookie, doesn't really get much out of that play, and he's going to lose another wave. Uh, if you're looking at Irma right now, he's already setting up for the top lane, and the Shy instantly backs off. So that's a good sign if you're an IG fan. Woo, he even flashes. Is this the Shy? Is this know, the same man. guy? <laughs> I don't know. He's a bit scared. <laughs> Sorry, Clever. Continue. I, I want to say that was a really good fake by Irma because he actually wasn't level six, but... You don't really want to risk that as the Shy, and uh, the Shy typically does not play defensive in that situation. He will stay there and he will die, but the Shy, you know, he's heard our messages, he's heard our prayers, and maybe he's here to uh, showcase a new side of him. I think uh, the Shy has definitely heard the criticism coming from the English broadcast, let's be quite honest, there was a lot last year. As IG moving towards this dragon, it's only six minutes into the game, but Balan into River, now caught out by Chelsea. Irma's there too, the winds of war. And IG want to fight, so they bring in the big guns, but the Shy, no Mega Nar, but still DPS. Wink gets another kill on the game, and IG happy to trade off to give kills to their AD carry. So Esars were the one that actually initiated that fight, but what they didn't account for was the teleport difference in the top lane. ZS already using that to his own tower. On the other hand, the Shy is able to come in and actually get the kills here. So I, I don't know what to say, man. Like I this is this is IG that we wanted to see. However, can Shun get out of this one? Yeah, but matched by Esars, Riders blocking here from Shun, the rest of Esar flying in. Hacker doesn't have the collateral damage, but the smoke screen slow. Out with the blast going to save the day, but the hook shot, wall shot, flash forward from ZS the Shy. Too late to help his jungler. ZS is chasing this a little bit too far as he takes the last bit of hyper. But IG losing out again an Easter. The tempo is being matched so nicely. They're playing this split bass situation absolutely beautifully. They have the timers onto Shun. They know he didn't have his flash from the earlier 2v2 in the mid lane. Instant pick up onto the kill, and they're looking to punish the Shy once more, who also does not have a flash. Look at the size of the wave, Clement. The Shy's going into Meganar, so it might not be too much of a problem. At the very least, backing away now. Good reset timing for ZS, who picked up the kill in that last transaction. This means early items coming through this means divine sundra could be there a little bit earlier than expected for invictus game and that has been the go-to that we've seen in the uh camille versus nara matchup nara a lot of extra hp however taking a look at this bottom lane wink is having a jolly good time right here already sitting up two kills <laughs> over in this matchup uh, this is going to be pretty difficult for e -Stars to hold and, and you know i want to see irma Come in. You got bullet time coming through. I was going to say, Rat doesn't have his ulti to survive this. Balan sacrifices his life again as Shun flies through the sky. Chelsea and Irma, do they have enough damage to survive? The answer, yes, as Shun takes a bit too much on his way out. Hacker's not nearby. He's doing Herald, so Chelsea just wants to find the kill. He's going to hex splash over the wall. He wants to kill the Pantheon, but you're an Alistar. And so you just entered to give a third kill to Wink. Yeah, that was a bit of an overaggression on his side. <laughs> Uh, you just seem so happy by that play. Uh, I, I actually really enjoyed that from IG. They knew they had a very strong bottom lane push coming in, and they had the extra global as well. So it was the Pantheon plus the TF coming in, creating this 4v3 situation. Irma does land on the right foot, but unfortunately he's not able to salvage that situation. And I don't think Rat had his ultimate at that point. Yeah, he's still level 5, so wasn't able yep. to dodge out of the uh, bullet time. Okay, Nara against the wall. Nice from the Shy. Hits the wall pretty hard. Knows the rest of the team's coming up. Hacker doesn't walk into the stun. And now out of Meganar. Gets a bit of movement speed. But the Hextech Golden Man locks him in place. And ZS gets another kill. E-Star's top laner off to a flying start. And E-Star themselves are not going without trading. This is the ESR's bread and butter play. They take the Herald and they focus everything onto the top side. Shalsi loves to roam and a lot of times he will leave Rat alone on that bottom side. 
just to make sure they get that first brick gold. So a very strong start from E Stars, and they're finally taking away that CS advantage from the Shy. The Shy was kind of running away at this matchup. We saw the early push into tower, the extra kills and teleport into the bot side, and at least they're able to stem the bleeding and make sure that the Shy doesn't run away with the side lane split push advantage. Because this feels like a pretty good time to mention that, you know, you talked about the side lane threat that the Camille offers, you know, one, two items and how she can run away with the game. Having Irma on the Galio hover, does it feel like late game is controlled then that E-Star can be down a bit of gold looking towards mid to late game fights, knowing they have the sideline threat? I will say the silent threat is really important because both of these teams are running globals and whoever has a silent lane split push is essentially can split the enemy team up. So that creates the actual opportunities for you to go in with your globals. So whoever wins that, Irma is going to be able to play a two-man game onto the top side. It's going to be easy to follow up and play around that. You're just going to have priority coming in from that lane. It makes it easier to take hook, uh, to create picks. And yep. that's why I put so much weight onto the top side. However, for now, IG have a dominant uh, force into the bottom. 3-0 and 1 onto Wink. Already has his Gale force. Not really much E-Stars can do to contest this. I will also say that, you know, with the Dragon going down, we're getting closer towards the potential mountain or ocean as Cloud's coming up second. So these are definitely Dragons to fight over. And just while you're having a chat there, I was noticing, yeah, the couple of kills went over to ZS, but the Shy still maintains that 40 CS advantage just about. And through mid, Rookie at 20. Wink, of course, is so far ahead with the Gale Force you also picked up and 160 gold for that plate. He's 25 CS over his opponents. So win lane, win game remains true for IG. What we were talking about before this segment. And E-Star know that. So they're trying to mitigate. They're trying to put some more resources towards this top lane. And Hacker has a Herald that he has to put down soon. Yeah, and this is what I love about Hacker's Herald play so far. Is that he is very patient with them. He does not drop them unless he sh he's certain that they yep. can follow up with just taking the entire tower. So what we've seen is that he goes top. He threatens to do it. He gets a bit of EXP advantage, he gets the waves shut in, but he doesn't drop it immediately. He wants the gank first and to guarantee that they can get maximum value out of that one. Let's also be realistic. He wants maximum value, but it is going to get to a point very shortly where that's just going to run out plain and true. And true. Top lane not really set up. Mid lane's backing as well, so this might just be a faulty placement for the Immortal Shieldbow Graves. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, Clement, because I think he's got about 30 seconds left. And all lanes are absent. Yeah, we could see them setting up for a huge three-man play onto the top side. Unfortunately, the Pantheon is spotted around the river. They decide to call that up. But they will try again now with Xiaosi heading into the top. E-Stars, this is, this is what they're known for. This is the three-man gank squad incoming. The Shy, however, is going to see this a mile away. There it is. Down it goes immediately because it was about to run out. The Shy going into Meganar. The outplay potential there. And remember... Global composition from Invictus Gaming as well. They can match. Xiaosi walks up first, but Hacker puts the Herald down with a full wave incoming and support from Invictus Gaming. So it's going to be a 4v4 onto the top side. Irma has arrived first here. Rookie does have his ultimate, but he will be a little bit slow to the play. But it looks like everything will fizzle out. I believe they did spot Baoland coming across um, that side of the map too. And with that defend, IG actually just run away with the trade. Their bot lane is completely open. No one's stopping Wink from just furthering his lead. And that's going to be a solid one from IG actually learning to play defensive. Yeah. You know, who knew? <laughs> who knew they were capable of doing such a thing? <laughs> Wink against his former support, Clement, looking real good here in game one. And I think Wink is someone we haven't talked about too much, but Wink as a player was on this E-Star roster when it made playoffs in its first ever split in 2020 spring. I was very high on him alongside Kryon, and I think he's an AD carry who has a lot of potential. So it is good to see him benefiting off this early game from Invictus Gaming as ZS kind of shafts that way. Okay, bye-bye. And uh, the Shy's going to get pushing. Yeah, that was a bit of a weird one right there, just throwing away his cooldowns. Um, he still does have the teleport here. And I think what he's doing is probably trying to bait the Shy in for this one. Um, but Hacker is still so far away from the play. I, I don't think the way, with the way the Shy has been playing this game, that he's going to fall for any of this. Nope. And continues to bully out, right? So if, if, if he then pulls back and Hacker doesn't make an appearance in the lane, continues shoving, plating uh, has just dropped down across the map. And the Shy's picked up most of it. Rookie's done an okay job on that mid turret. Wink has butchered the bottom lane turret that... 
was an animal would be calling the protection services. And he's almost towards his second item, Clement. That collector is not too far off where Rat has just established himself with the Gale Force. Yep, and this is sort of the new build we've seen coming out from Misfortune after the Muramane uh, cost was increased. Don't really see that item anymore. He's going to go for straight lethality. He's going to hit like a truck in these games. And what I like about this setup coming in from IG is that they can be the second ones in onto the objectives and just sort of hit E-Stars over the wall. They have great range with the Misfortune. They can poke out yeah. with Rookie. And this really covers up uh, a lot of IG's weaknesses in terms of the Drake setup. They, they're not a team that really likes the setup for the Drakes much. And this is a composition where they can be the second ones on the scene. True. And even if they're the first ones, right? Like, there's, there's so many tools in the kit that it's impossible not to be able to set up with a composition like this and get Wink one good target for an ultimate. So, as we see the Rift Herald getting traded for the Dragon here on the other side of the map, as E-Stars are about to start that one in 10 seconds. Uh, it looks like Shun's going to back away and potentially aim for contesting it or just going back to his camp. So, trades across the map. IG still up about 1,500 gold at 15 minutes. And I'm so glad, again, we had that segment that I've been harping on about these teams are reigning true to their conditions and what we expected. Rat's just trying to farm up and get back into this game. And you can see the shy still butchering the lane. Now has Divine Sundra and Solar Lane is just still winning out with CS discrepancies. Ooh, 50 CS ahead. This is going to be very hard for, for ZS to actually yep. come back from. And I, I'm... I actually like this play coming out from IG. They know the enemy team has to reset after the Drake. They drop the Herald immediately, and they open the map up completely. So now they have all of their wing conditions aligned perfectly. They have the split push yep. advantage. They have the double globals, and they also have the enemy side of the map completely wide open. That bottom lane tower is not going to stay alive for much longer. It's going to be double long lanes uh, on the side of E-Stars. And this is going to force them into a very, very defensive posture. Because when you're playing against a team like this one, you almost always have to overcompensate on defense. You, you can't assume that the enemy globals are not going to come in right underneath your tower. True, and when we have ability haste so readily available in the game now, things like these globals become that, that much e easier to utilize. And, you know, I'll clarify what you're saying because I think it's a, a really important conversation where you talk about these elongated lanes and you can play... You, you have to assume that there is that deep vision. You have to assume that there's someone waiting in the bush or the globals are coming out because an enemy's in fog of war, right? Like, there's no river control yep. when there's no turrets to stand on. And having those lanes open up on your side of the map just means that uh, your champions are going to have to take up their CS in plain view, very, very far away from where the side lane action is actually happening. So if you look at the mid lane here, Hacker and Rat are showing on the map. They know that ZS has no support, and IG is very willing to collapse here. And, you know... That just means that ass cannot walk up to the wave anymore. IG yeah, are collapsing go. here. That bot lane tower, it's not going to stand. So well said. ZS has to overcompensate on this defense. A, a crucial factor. Irma going to the top side because he knows that the rest of IG are around the bottom. But we'll just be able to push that one out. Try for the turret. And IG will still have to do their due diligence clearing out the ward so they can threaten other parts of the map. But this is a beneficial trade. The Shy gets solo turret gold once again here on the NAR and continues pushing in with IG still hovering around the fog of war in this blue side jungle. Here's the two-man gank incoming. It's very hard to anticipate when uh, TF does not actually need his global to get yeah. into this play. This is a four-man rotation. I'm not sure about that teleport. Mm. This seems very suspect to me. Versus five, Irma walks on in and just wants to win the war the wave. At least he gets out alive, but the inner turret goes down and IG moves as a five-man unit. What did they lose? The top turret was dead anyway. Yeah, super weird teleport because they see all IG members on that one and the rest of the team wasn't really there to follow up. So they just lo lose a huge cooldown for absolutely nothing. Yep. And uh, E-Star is... They're going to find it quite difficult right now. I think what E-Stars can still look for is picks going into that Dragon Pit. And we do have to uh, pay attention to the itemizations. Camille has gone for the Triforce. So she's going to be doing a lot more damage to the back line compared to the front line. And what they should be looking for is a sort of dive where Shaozi goes in, Irma goes in, uh, ZS goes in. And they just try to blow up Wink in an instant. 
because Wink has the majority of resources on this team. You know, he's now got a stopwatch as well. So I like the itemization here from Wink. Instead of upgrading the tier two boots, he knows that the next dragon fight's going to be pretty big and that everyone's going to be targeting this misfortune. So he's going to play for a bit of time and hope that the disengage from IG plays its part. That's the uh, only win condition that E-Stars have right now is basically just <laughs> blowing up this misfortune. So I love the pickup. And this is what we've been seeing in the LPL. A lot of times people will go for early stopwatches when they have their second item completed just to stay safe. Little Duran though used. Shun could be a bit in trouble. I say that though. IG is still so far ahead that it feels like Shun can just stay here at half health and contest for the Krugs. Uh, Irma trying for a bit of a play. But again, remember, Dragon's coming up. The Baron will spawn, but we'll watch that for a little bit. Uh, back timing's coming through from IG to prepare for this one. A lot of vision control on their side of the map. This Drake is coming up in 30 seconds. E-Stars have that one ward into the river, but they have a lot of time to actually walk up, especially if you look at that bottom wave. It's basically completely in favor of IG as they have their way pushing in. So, you know, the Shia is going to have a lot of angles here. He's going to be able to close off E-Stars and try to herd them to the left side of the map. And Chelsea has to burn his ultimate early. Not a great sign. No, the Unbreakable Will down means E-Star may have just forfeited the dragon. Uh, he pulls back and ZS going to continue pushing the top side. As he backs away, IG actually not going to start it in three seconds. Instead, going for the inner turret. They're focusing on objectives and snowballing the gold even further. Gold card lands onto Irma, and for E-Star, still to find the engage and clear the wave, that's doable, but IG knowing they can't go for a second time. This is just so incredibly tough for E-Stars to find the engage. If you look at the defensive itemization coming out from Rookie and Wink, they really know that E-Stars are on the rope. They're not going to give them any chances whatsoever. Rookie going straight for the Zhania second, making sure that he can make the Messiah play Ooh. or making sure that he's not going to die to the three-man here. Clement, the teleport coming down. I was pointing it out because E-Stars huh. have a control ward here and it wasn't cleared by IG, but the Shy kind of duked them and went back down to the bottom lane through the safest angle. Uh, so I really don't like that teleport yeah. when Baron is already on the map. Because even if you find that kill, you don't get the Drake, and you're over-focused on the bottom side anyway. So, I, I, I don't think that was a great teleport call coming in from ZS. Uh, I think he might have been prompted to make that play because he mm. thought that the rest of the IG members were rotating in for him. But that wasn't the case, and once again, E-Stars are losing side lanes, uh, Baron is open, and they don't have any teleports on the comp left. Not a great position to be in. Let's also remember that if you get that kill, then what happens? It probably doesn't lead to Baron. Death time is aren't enough to doesn't rotate to the top any. side. Yeah, that's right. Dragon's not there. So uh, despair being thrown in the air. And a lot, a lot of our chat, a lot of our audience will be saying, it's only a 1500 gold lead, by the way. I don't know if anyone can hear that, but the police outside, it's just rolling past my door every day. Um, this is 22 minutes of domination from IG. The gold lead doesn't do it justice, as I was just saying. Valor not going to get caught out here either, and E-Star moving into River. ZS is now grouped up as Rookie with the gold card onto Rat. Doesn't ult just yet. Hextech ultimated. This is Wink, who Gale Force forward. He's stuck in the back, uses the stopwatch just in time, and this is what we're talking about, Clement. Right. He flashes away, and because he's still alive, Easter will continue to lose the fight. Shun backs out, and Easter have lost their bottom lane duo. Five versus three at 23 minutes in the game. Not sure how that one started out, but it does seem like Rookie found a pick onto Rat, forces him to back away, and Shun is able to swoop in and finish the job off. So IG blow the game wide open. They have full map control. Enemy jungler is very far away from the play, and Ballland's interference should be enough to secure them this Baron. And to clarify what I was saying before, it must have been an ambulance driving by for Rat and Chelsea because... <laughs> <laughs> in Victor's gaming, you know, they put them in the body bags themselves and Baron just taken. This gold lead is going to be huge. And you talked about Nar being a side laner. He's got two items. He's going to do very well against ZS and IG can play through so many avenues. Hey, at least it isn't a hearse. You know, an ambulance is still fine. You can come back yeah. from those. Okay, E-Stars, I, I believe in you. But I really want to get a replay of how that fight started out. I think I saw the rocket belt being used by Rookie just to go in and just force some uh, ultimates out from Rat. 
um doesn't look like we're actually gonna get anything here okay here we go so it is rookie with the rocket belt he does find the extra movement speed rat is forced out of the play and zs actually has to use a very defensive hextech ultimatum uh this is not how you want to play the combo you definitely want it to be a one-shot combo with alistar in on the play as well they don't get that and pantheon on the back end is able to snipe out the zaya it's so annoying because with Gore Drinker, Pantheon becomes that bruiser just so much quicker and very hard to kill. His nice hook here from Bao Lan locks down the bottom lane once again. The root caller can't connect. His teleport's coming in and Easter. Want to fight this, but Zed is already dead. The bullet time lines up and Rookie right into the middle. Gold card. Does he have his onions available? Yes, he does. As he goes pure golden. He gets rooted up anyway. They re engage onto Irma. Gold card at the ready once more. Irma golden himself. Everyone likes to waste that money, but. IG still went out, five members in front of us here, and with Baron, this push is going to get severe. That reaction time from Shun was absolutely amazing. He Ooh. drops the pink ward, instantly has the stun onto ZS, and the Camille dies before she can even get off the wall, instantly taking it to a 5v4, and they just snowball the rest of it. But what did we say at the start? IG win quick or lose quick? 25 minutes into the game, 6,000 gold lead. Inhibitor now broken through mid, and... I'm going to ask you the, the cast a question that the audience probably hates to hear. How do Easter find anything in this game to come back? They can plan for game two. That's why we have BO3s. Oh. <laughs> that, that's kind of a cop-out answer, that's but I just no. want to see, look that's at this the from uh, ZS. Okay, so the pink ward was there already, but still very fast reaction time from Shun. Camille doesn't get to do anything. She's behind enemy lines. A uh, bit of a questionable engage route coming in from Camille, and... They just take everything from this point. I love the Messiah play coming in from Rookie. He's able to stand in the ramp. Nothing can be done about him. Good tower juggling. And, you know, even it was even it, though it was only a 1.5k gold lead on the side of IG, because they had the side lane pressure and because they had the global composition to cash out on it, they really were so far ahead in that situation. Yeah, Hacker couldn't put out any of the fires. You know, Hacker couldn't mitigate any of the losses, get that top lane ahead and to an eve equal point and look we're seeing ocean soul here the game won't go for far enough for ig to pick it up but now they've got a bit more healing with the double in hand and wink in this bottom lane ig grouping around him with some of those globals as rookie receives the wave remember he has teleport too so we just got to wait for ig's next pick which could end the game in another pre 30 minute showdown hysterics do you know what the highlight of this game is what was it the highlight of this game was actually the shy flashing backwards when Irma yeah. was off the map. That was Rude. the highlight right there. Dude, he's only died once. I know. I can't believe it myself. He's averaging one point, like he's averaging 1.7 deaths yeah. at 15 minutes. And that's low and, uh, from 2020 <laughs> standards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that was a good play from Estars. That was a play where he said, hey, Galio, good job. Even though you were only level five, you got a free flash in the top lane, but that set the tone for the shot. That set the tone for this series. The it's Shy is not going to throw away his life anymore. Yeah, it's a new The Shy. You know, he's uh, he's changed. And look, to see his Nar come out, uh, folks, we didn't actually show you in game, but uh, The Shy's Nar is currently 3-0. and zero. So he's going to put another win on that board. He's uh, uh, really carrying the win rate for the league and will be after this game as well. As Rookie's pushing this side lane turret, and you can see IG moving up, waiting for the next wave. Poke from Rookie, still devastating with three items, and Irma has to think about backing away as Balan now joins the show. Yep, he does have the Banshees here, so a lot of damage being thrown on. They have a lot of defensive plays set up. Uh, for E-Stars, we've been talking about this entire game, but they really require that one-shot punch from the Globals, from the mm -hmm. Cannonball composition of Camille, uh, plus the Galio and probably Hacker's damage to kind of finish it off. But at this point in the game, we look at the de defensive items. I love what Wink has done here. It's a third item GA, so he's not really dying anytime soon in these team fights. E Stars are going to have to juggle their targets in these 5v5s. I don't think they're going to be able to take anyone down in time before IG just out damages them. So this is really a time where I think we can say pretty uh, confidently that it's, a, it's more of a test to IG. It's about can IG finish this game off cleanly with the advantages that they have. Again, free 30. That was kind of the time I set. IG still pushing in the waves. Maybe we actually do see the Ocean Soul or the next Baron get contested. 35 seconds. 
And it does feel like with Baron, this becomes a lot more, a lot easier, a lot quicker. So makes sense that IG are pacing themselves until that comes up. Another 30 seconds and we'll find out. And I do want to give a shout out to Coach uh, Along for mm -hmm. coming from IG Young. It does look like he was able to whip the shy or whip this team into shape. This is a much cleaner game than we expected from them all split long. And it does look like they're going to find a pick. Uh, Chelsea onto two, but they're still not going to commit. Irma just doesn't ult. Uh, I feel like that was the time to throw all the cards on the table. You've lost your support. You've now lost Baron. Unless Hacker can find a miracle still. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Hacker has been farming up a storm this entire time. But uh, unfortunately for him, he really hasn't found those skirmishes where he has a stable front line for him to actually dish out damage. He's been up 40 CS compared to Shun. And uh, this does kind of set the stage for uh, the kind of the differences between the carry junglers and the ganking junglers that we've been talking about. A lot of the top junglers in our league right now are transitioning more towards the ganks. Uh, we have Meteor and Karsa and Beishan going for Sejuani and a lot of Pantheon being played. Pantheon right now is 13-3 and three in the LPL. Very, very successful. And maybe the meta isn't uh, how we envisioned it, you know. All the analysts from LCK and LCS do recognize jungler as the most important position in this meta. But even among this position, there are so many different ways to play it. And it's interesting because, you know, in the LPL, usually we go by a bubble and, and what's kind of seen at the start is, is is played throughout. The adaptation here is really nice to see, considering that, you know, you talk about Sejuani and Pantheon. I mean, Pantheon across a lot of regions is, is, is quite large, but yeah, we are getting those small bursts of creativity out of our picks, which is always exciting to see. And, you know, while I, I was talking up 80 carries at the start of the broadcast, I think, yeah, we come back to Shun and Hackers. We also set up being a core part and core part in the league is some of the strongest junglers now it's kind of time to put up as the shy goes into mega nah or about to at the very least he has flash available level 17 nah wants the big wallop as well hacker walking forward he's absorbing damage taking none himself with the thorn mail and the sterex and you know they got baron dragons up to get the soul and that'll just be a bit of an overkill to end this game now, nothing much really E-Stars can do. Um, they're not getting punished on the mm. front line, and actually, the Shy is able to walk away from this one. Yeah, he didn't take any damage once again. Rookie's coming in. Gold card there onto Shousey. ZS engages onto the Shy, who heals up. Serex Gate Shield pop. Going Golden sets up the engage for Irma. Wink hiding back here, waiting to survive. Irma goes Golden. Oh, he gets IG out. getting low. The Shy is drawn away. ZS. Wink is still here. Irma with another knockup with the Winds of War, but he has GA. The problem is, you invested your resources resources across this team and they're all so damn powerful uh everyone wants to kill the shy on uh, on e-stars they just <laughs> wholly focus on him that's the only one they need to make sure that they need to ruin his kda they need to tilt the shy that's what they were going for but they throw the entirety of the team fight after that one the wombo combo goes in and you can see in the hexec ultimatum the shy only takes like 300 hp he's able to walk out perfectly he has too many defensive items but e-stars that was just sending a message to the shy we knew this was over a couple of minutes ago at least but ig finally sealing the deal game one feels really nice from victus gaming and you know, we've said this in a couple other series, Clement, so let's not get ahead of ourselves, but at least a very good start for IG to show they are still one of the potential top teams.